Hey YouTubers, this is a seasonal episodic TV show of Duke TV. That's right, this is where we talk about the latest and greatest gaming news and we also have competitions. Not only that, but we actually interact with YouTube audience. I answer your questions that you want to know about me. Not only that, but we've also got the announcement for the winner of the PS5 multifunction and cooling stand. Stick around for that. Also, we are doing channel highlights. This is where I go out, shout out to another YouTuber to go out and check their channel. So enough verbal diarrhea, roll those cameras! Hit it off with the news. So YouTubers, let's talk E3. Who won? Who sucked? Let's just put it right here. I'm just going to talk about the big three main contenders. Microsoft, Nintendo, minus Sony, because certainly don't show up at E3 anymore. They just do their random state of plays now and again. And the developer conferences. It's going to be short. It's going to be sweet. Because E3 2021 was quite trash to be fair. Let's talk the developer conferences, let's get them out of the way. First of all, Capcom came on for like 25 minutes. They showed no additional games. It was just some like additional DLC content. I don't even know why they were there, first of all. The only thing that they talked about that interested me was some Resident Evil 8 DLC and they've not even started on that yet. They've literally just looked at the reception of Resident Evil Village and gone, wow, this is so great. Let's just make some DLC. Let's just throw an announcement out there. Let's make some DLC. Now, let's move over to Square Enix. Square Enix was one of the better of the three main developers that were there on the stage. I saw a Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy game. Uh, some people are hating on that, but that, I, they did go a bit long on that. They actually spent about 20 minutes of a whole conference just talking about Guardians of the Galaxy. But that does look good. I actually do think, I know it's not, I know that some of the avatars, some of the artwork, the graphic design don't exactly look like it, but it's close enough for me and I actually kind of dig it. I will be checking that out on my channel in the future. So Square Enix was one of the better, better developer conferences that I saw there, which I mean, which I was pretty happy with when I walked away from it. I didn't have high expectations going in there. So I wasn't disappointed there. Ubisoft. Oh wow, okay, so Ubisoft's conference is like advert, game, add-on, advert, game, add-on, and I didn't really get a lot from Ubisoft either. There was nothing at Ubisoft's conference that really caught my attention. There's another Just Dance game, all the usual trash. Ubisoft didn't really do anything for me this year, so yeah, you could have done better. Let's talk about the big two. Nintendo. So Nintendo for me, like there were a lot of there was a lot in this conference. Nintendo had know how to deliver an E3 press conference in 40 minutes. I have got a link here for Twinfinite who think that Nintendo actually won E3. I don't think that they won E3 personally. So they had Metroid Dread, which isn't Prime, but it's a 2D scroller of Metroid. I've not really played those in the past, but I absolutely love Metroid Prime. Actually, I do lie, I've played a side-scrolling Metroid before, and it was actually pretty good. I'm just spoiled by today's 4K HD 60 frames per second to even want to go back to all the consoles. I know that sounds <laughs> bad and I do appreciate some of the older games but there's just so much out there and so little time and as, as an adult for me to go back and play all the extra stuff so I've just got to focus and enjoy 
what's on there now. So Metro Dread, I definitely am getting that. I'm looking forward to that. And as well, I was holding out for like the big Zelda announcement. I was holding out and holding out and holding out and then came the end of the conference and then they went, we have got one final announcement. And then when it was Hyrule Warriors DLC, I was like, Oh my god, this is trash, this is trash, this is trash. They've, they've put us all into a false sense of security, but then it came a trailer for Breath of the Wild 2, and that just made Nintendo's conference worthy of being there at the time. It was good, it looked amazing, you're able, it looks a bit of a cross between Skyward Sword and Breath of the Wild, which doesn't bother me. Um, so Nintendo was really good at E3, it made E3 decent at best overall and then let's talk about my winner Microsoft, that's right. So I have actually had a massive drought with Microsoft over the past oh, generation of consoles, I've been Sony, Sony, Sony. As you know, I'm not a Sony pony. Don't go hitting on the comments down below. I actually, you know, have been hitting up God of War, Horizon, Uncharted, all those, The Last of Us, and those have brought it to the table. But now Microsoft have obtained all these studios. They're in a position to deliver. And going into the future, you're gonna start seeing more you know, Xbox related stuff on my channel, balance out. I'm looking forward to Halo Infinite. That is the reason I've got an Xbox Series X. And the one, I know we didn't see gameplay, but at the end, the final trailer that dropped for me, Redfall, that looks amazing. I can't wait to see what they're gonna do with that. Those two games out of the Microsoft conference, also, yeah, Forza Horizon, if you don't have a Forza Horizon. I'm not really into motorsport. I like to sort of, I like the arcade kind of car games. So I, to be able to play Forza Motorsport with my kids, just to cruise around in fancy cars, that does it for me. And Microsoft know how to deliver a good conference as well. There was a lot in there. There's more that I could talk about, but I want to keep this short and sweet. So YouTubers, E3 winner for Big Doog is Microsoft. That's right. I'm loving it, Microsoft. Keep it coming. Can't wait for Fable in the future. That right. If anyone wants to check out a link down in the comments below from Twinfinite, I actually, there's an article there where you can read upon what they thought, who was the winner. They thought Nintendo was the winner for E3. There's gonna be this and that. In anyone's opinion, it's either gonna be Nintendo or Microsoft. Let me know down in the comments below. You thought one E3 2021. This last episode, we didn't get time to do a Q&A, question and answers. So I'm just gonna pick out two questions and I'm gonna answer them as best I can. So. I've picked one here from one of the Facebook groups. She's called Zoe Ann Webb. Check her out right there. Here's a question. How do you get your ideas for your content? Is it a personal interest or is it what the audience wants to see? So Zoe, I actually view my own personal YouTube channel as like a so Netflix. I like to have a Let's Play series as like um, do flicks like a, a Netflix then I like to also have a variety on my channel I like to do unboxings I like to do do TV series to engage with my audience like I am right now I also like to interact with my YouTube audience with this series do TV give back to you you've been giving me your precious time I kind of go out there and just do what people want me to do I just want to be me I want to be myself and if people like me then please come and watch my channel interact with it and if people like me then 
I feel like that's a self accomplishment. I've had um, three ambassador programs as of the shooting of this video. So obviously people are watching my channel, giving me the opportunities. I've got monetized from it. I've put so much hard work into it. And I also like to have a personal touch. I don't throw a video every day. I tend to throw a video every two to three days, let it gain some traction, let YouTube promote it and I get about 10 to 15 videos out on a monthly basis and between those videos I kind of plan how many gaming videos I'd have, interactive videos and unboxing videos and I try and mix it up sometimes. If I've got enough time I might push a vlog out now and again but this is what I like to do. This is all through personal interest. This is my channel. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, second and final question for this segment. Also from the Facebook group, Frido Carlos asks, have you ever lost the motivation to make content? And if so, what do you do to get back to making more? So, as I mentioned before to Zoe's answer, I have a structure. I don't try and burn myself out. Obviously, I have a job as well. I try not to burn myself out. I've got a family. I've got other responsibility and I don't just once I've uploaded a video find one out straight onto the channel. I like to get a video, take my time, edit it, make sure that it's got a thumbnail, tags, descriptions, chapters within the video, hashtags, the lot. Then I go and promote the video myself. That's why I tend to fire one out every couple of days and to make sure that I don't burn out I just kind of take steps with it. So. Like now, I'll shoot the video, then I'll go and edit the video. When I've got time, I'll, I'll take an hour or two out of my day. Then I'll go and upload it at the same time, and then it'll go into pending. I'm always about six to eight videos ahead of schedule, just so I can kind of, if, I, if there's something I need to get in that month, then I'll put it in, but I've also, if I kind of get behind or I need to catch up a little bit, I've got time to sort of, you know, stay in touch with myself and I kind of don't let myself get burnt out. I just take my time with it and it's like, it's like being self-employed, but it's, it's a hobby and it doesn't make much, but it's something that I enjoy. I do lose motivation, but then again, I just pick it up. Sometimes I feel like I'm having a lazy day. Sometimes I'm like, right, let's, what am I gonna do today? So I just pace myself. That's why I never burn out, lose motivation. I just re kick back and relax when I need to and then pick myself when I need to as well. Never really had a week off from YouTube for the past two and a half years. Everyone's different. And I, I hope I can keep up to that trend. Okay, YouTubers, it's that time for honourable YouTube channel mentions. And this episode of Do TV, I just want to highlight Agent JDB3. Agent is a fantastic YouTuber. I think what makes him great and the reason you should check his channel out yeah he does let's plays he does collabs online but his editing skills with his channel are next level for for a small youtuber even he's got funny intros he's very unique and he's just very quick on the go the guy is full of quips he's so dedicated He's done like Q&A sessions, I've watched his Q&A sessions and I've like taken time to listen into the background of like his YouTube career. He only started a year ago and he's grown quite significantly. He's um, about 1k subscribers and he's very likeable and I just kind of want to show you what there is to like about him. Roll the clip! Oh god, oh god! Ah! Right in our stomach! Ah! Ah! Right in your left ah! milker! Previously on the Vampire Diaries. Ah! 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 It seems today that all you see is violence. So, YouTubers, I'll leave a link down in the description below just to go ahead and check his YouTube channel out. Please go do that, see what you think. Okay, YouTubers, it's that time again. 
It's competition time! Let's just announce the winner. If you checked out my most recent ambassador program from Mexico, I've gone back to the comments and there are two people that followed the terms and conditions of the actual competition. Those two competition applicants were Life and Game and Agent JDB3. Now, I believe these two have PS5, so that's why they went in. You had to go like the video, be a subscriber, comment the reason or what you thought about the competition or where you would have it in your house, and put below hashtag keep my PS5 cool. These were the only two that jumped in and followed those rules. So therefore, let's go to the clip. I decided here to just do a coin toss, heads and tails, 50-50 chance. Roll that clip. Okay, Life and Gaming, JDB3. This is the coin toss for the competition. We're gonna go red heads, we're gonna go white tails. Agent, I'm giving you heads. Life and Game, I'm giving you tails. Whoever wins this coin flip gets the PS5 cooling stand. Let's hit it. And the winner is Heads, Agent JDB3. You're the winner. So the winner of the PS5 multifunctional cooling stand is Agent JDB3. Congratulations. You have won this Nexico PS5 multifunctional cooling fan. God, that's a mouthful. I'm gonna hit you up, brother. I'm gonna get in touch, message you directly, and if you let me know your address, etc., etc., I will send this to you in the post. Congratulations. Okay, YouTubers, that is this season's month of Do TV. If you enjoyed this episode, all you gotta do is go down there and smash that like button let's destroy that youtube algorithm together and if you're new here scroll on over to the other side hit that subscribe button if you want future videos from this channel and if you want notifications as to when those go live just go over there and tap that notification bell youtubers if you have any feedback or questions that you want to ask me in the next seasonal episode of Doog TV, which will be coming up to the autumn, just hit me up. I would appreciate the questions. I love the interactivity on my channel. Or if you just want to ask for collabs, which I'll be doing in the future. Or if there's any companies or ambassador programs out there, get in touch, come my way. YouTubers, I'm your host, Big Doog.